And he said to me, the Lord now says to John, and he said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. This is the first time ever the Lord Jesus is asking John to prophesy. He is saying to John, now you are coming in to share with me my work and my plans. Now, John, I'm going to reveal to you my glory. I'm going to reveal to you my power. I'm going to reveal to you my own work. I'm going to make you share with me what I do and how I do things. Today your eyes are open, John, and you will see the work of God right before your eyes. And not only see the work of God, you will do it with me. Why now you will do it? Because you accepted the bitterness. John the Beloved lived around 105 years of age. He was the oldest out of the 12 disciples and the last to depart this world into the next. And he died a natural death. He was not martyred. In other words, he died in a little island called Pedmos in the heart of the Mediterranean Sea in current Greece. And that's where he wrote the book of Revelation, in a cave in that island. He lived all his life for Christ. And at the end of his life, he wants to retire. He's a hundred and a, and a bit. He's too old. Now he's expecting the Lord to give him comfort and say, this is your superannuation. Now you can have this house and this Mercedes Benz and you can travel the world. Now you're retired, brother. I'm going to send the angels to look after you, to feed you and to clothe you and to look. And it'll be seven star nursing home. After 105 years of hard work and sacrifices, the Lord says, John, I give you your retirement plan. You will be kicked out of Jerusalem all the way in exile to a little island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And you will live there with the thieves, with the killers, with the murderers. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you wonderful? Lord, all my life was bitter. All my life I was persecuted for your word's sake. For I carried your word, the truth. I spoke the truth. I preached the truth. I reached the world with your truth, the light of the world. I was persecuted for it, Lord. People hated me. People went against me. My life was all bitter. Even now, he says, yes. But now that you have tolerated this persecution till the end, being the faithful servant, Jono, now I'm going to give you something I have given no one else. You will write the book of Revelation. Come up to heaven. You're in exile on earth. All the doors are shut in the world of the world in your face, I'll open my own door, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and my door is in heaven. Let me see if there is any power that can shut this door now. I'm going to reveal to you things no one has seen. I'm going to tell you to write things no one has heard before. And I'm going to tell you to prophesy uh, you know, about people, nations, and tongues that no one else has prophesied like you, John. You see, when you accept the bitterness for my sake, I'll give you my glory. Nothing comes for free. And quality things are never cheap. You want to buy a mansion, overlook in the Darling Harbor? You need to pay for it. It's not the same price as buying uh, a granny flat. You can't buy a granny flat. Or buy a house in Smithfield or somewhere in Fairfield, Nita City. You can't. The city will be always expensive. You want to be with Christ in his kingdom, in his city? You need to pay for it. You need to accept this bitterness. But with this bitterness, you'll find God, the narrow door. 